Um, hello, everybody. Um, I can start doing the, uh, my talk, and when Maya joins us, um, we'll continue from there. Um, I can start, by the way, with sharing my screen. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, just checking, can you see my screen and uh, the, the, the first slide of the presentation? Let me know in the chat. Uh, great, great. Thanks for the feedback. Uh, so today we are here to talk about uh, how to use Elementor to increase our sales uh, using Elementor plus WooCommerce. And the title of the talk is Create a Winning WooCommerce Website with Elementor. And uh, just a briefly, uh, briefly about myself, I've been doing web design for more than 10 years. And in that uh, time period, I've created somewhat uh, above, a little bit above uh, 350 websites. <laughs> I've done everything from small businesses to uh, large corporations. Hello, Maya. I uh, <laughs> took up the mantle for you and uh, started with, uh, with the presentation. You can hop in and... And do no issue at all. Sorry, uh, for some reason my in internet kicked me out from my own room. So <laughs> we just at least say that this is another go that it probably me a meetup and Milan is talking. Thank you very much, and I'll see you later then. Great, great. Thank you, Maya, and thank you, Maya, for inviting me in the in the first place. I'm really, really excited to be here and to share my experience with all the other GoDaddy Pro enthusiasts uh, and and WordPress colleagues. Uh, so, as I mentioned, uh, I've been uh, I've worked at some digital agency. I've done work with some traditional companies in the IT department, and. Uh, for the last six or seven years, um, I find my passion also in teaching. So I have a WordPress course now and uh, I'll keep it there. Uh, I have a YouTube channel and course that called Level Up, uh, but it's in Serbian uh, because I want to, uh, to my fellow men in my country, I want them to, to have the opportunity to do the work that they love and not the one that they have to. So. Let's uh, start by the way. Uh, today, I will tell you one big secret that will boost your e-commerce sales. And the secret is that there is no one trick that will increase your sales. And that's a, a, a hard pill to swallow. And I wish there was uh, so I can just teach you in the five minutes and everybody has more money in the bank by the end of the month. But the thing is, I've uh, borrowed a quote uh, from uh, Victoria Madison. She says, happiness, but I'm saying say, selling is not one big thing. It's all the little things put together. So uh, not a single thing that I will show you today won't make a huge difference. Okay, uh, depending on what scale are we talking about. For example, when Amazon just changes the shade of the orange in their button, it results in millions uh, in, in sales. But for the average online uh, e-commerce store, uh, stuff like that won't drastically uh, improve uh, your, your your conversion rate. But having those multiple uh, little things uh, that, that we can change can result in, in better conversion rates. And that's what we are here today to talk about. Uh, so the things that we will cover in this talk is how to create a custom page with Elementor. And uh, because we have limited time, uh, I will be focusing only on the product page. There are a lot of things, a lot of pages that are involved in the whole process of, of selling online with e-commerce store. But today we will focus only on the product page. And uh, we will use Elementor's uh, options, uh, for example, to pull, pull data from custom fields and to enrich that product page, uh, how to add multimedia, how to replace a bunch of prod, uh, plugins uh, with Elementor's built-in tools. And that's one of the key points of using Elementor's, Elementor is that we don't have to use uh, 20 uh, different plugins for various things, uh, but we can use Elementor and replace all of those plugins. Also, uh, we will uh, see how we can use social proof in multiple ways uh, to improve the conversion rate and answer uh, some, some of the 
um, core uh, misbeliefs or, or, or misconceptions uh, of clients when they visit our page because by nature we are social creatures and we value opinion of others. Uh, and how to place call to actions in the, in the correct way so we can always uh, have focus on, on the one key thing and that is how to sell and how to get that product into the, in, into the cart. And uh, one of the last big things that we will cover is how to use pop-ups that don't suck because nobody likes to be interrupted and to have all those annoying uh, pop-ups. But if we use them in a correct way, it can really uh, result in, in much higher conversion rate. And I just wanted to, to point out what we'll not cover in this talk is, like I said, uh, building an entire e-commerce store because that will require a course of its own. Uh, and I'll, I'll skip the things like installing WordPress, team setup, adding products. Uh, this is all the things that I've already set up. And I presume that most of you are already familiar with uh, all of those steps. And uh, of course, I will not showcase every possible thing that Elementor has to offer. And uh, of course, some of those, uh, some of these things that I will show you can be done in a different way, of course, and maybe could be done even uh, with higher amount of, let's say, functionalities using some additional tools. But today I want to show you how we can replace uh, those tools if you don't need all of those options, which will, which will result in much higher uh, page speed. Uh, and uh, of course, in the end, I would love to hear your questions. So uh, if you want, you can ask them in the chat so I can go later, uh, go through them. Uh, it would be a huge help if you could write questions uh, uh, and then ask your questions. So when I scan the chat, I can um, find them easier. So. Uh, yeah, let's start the action and I will uh, go to, to, to my uh, WordPress dashboard. Uh, the, the setup is I have Bloxy as my team and this is the, the, the team that I uh, use for all of my projects and I think it's very, very good. And for the plugins, I have a few things installed uh, and even less things uh, active. So basically we will only use Elementor and Elementor Pro this is a plugin for backup and WooCommerce, of course. Uh, this is an interesting plugin that uh, does, uh, it automatically adds uh, alt text to all the images. So I, I don't have to enter it manually. It uses the, the, the title for the alt text. So basically we only have the, the Elementor installed. And uh, I went ahead and entered the, a product. Uh, I've chosen a very beautiful Scandinavian uh, watch and as you can see, it's pretty basic. We only have like the, the, the things that you are used to, like the product title, uh, the description, short description, and it's a variable product. So we have attributes like case color and dial color and variations for all, uh, all of those. And when you look at the, the page for the product itself, uh, it's pretty something that you are used to by now. So we have the, the product images, we have the title, the price uh, we can choose. And one important thing, don't be lazy here. You can uh, connect the attributes, let's say, for example, sil silver and white. You can connect them with the images uh, itself. So when you go, when you create all the variations, you can connect the, that image from the image in the in the gallery. So don't be lazy, do that and make it easier for your customers when they select it to know what they're getting. So for example, this is my favorite combination. So, uh, and below that we have description, additional information, reviews and related products. This in it for itself it, it is a good layout. It, it really has uh, stood the test of time and it really is good, but how can we take it a step further and have more customization options? Because when we look at the home page, the contact page, it's something that we can control easily. But uh, when it comes to WooCommerce pages, it's not something that, that we can easily uh, control. So this is where uh, a page builder like Elementor steps in and can really help us do just that. So 
Uh, yeah, and one other suggestion, this is something that I like to do uh, before I start designing and start doing. I created uh, a, a page that I call a style guide and lay out all of my fonts, uh, different uh, font families, uh, accent colors and stuff like that. How will the buttons look so I can see it? So uh, a little quick pro tip. Uh, so one thing that we can do is to go to templates and theme builder. And this is really a, a new shift in the industry, industry when Elementor and other page builders introduce this uh, option. So we can design, for example, a single uh, post page or, or in our example, single product page, and we will do just that. So uh, let's create a single product. Okay. Pay template. And for the most part, we will recreate uh, all the good things that, that we have with, uh, with this page layout. And we will add on top of this uh, all the things that we need. Uh, so in your, in your shop, you don't have to do all of these things. Uh, you can take what you like and, and add it. Also, uh, the point of this talk is not for you to follow every click that I do, but uh, for me to showcase what is possible and what you find new and interesting, you can Google it uh, easily later. But the, so don't, don't worry if you don't uh, get every single click that I, that I do. And of course, I'm here uh, later on for, for questions. Uh, okay, so Elementor is basically like all the other page builders we have sections columns and elements so we will start by doing uh, one section with two columns and recreate so we have on the right product title and this will be dynamically added uh, and let's add price price followed by short description Okay, and add to cart. There we go. Uh, the one thing that I like to do is to, uh, let's say I have a particular product in mind that I want to showcase, that I want to see the info. Uh, Pioneer. Yeah, Pioneer Watch. I want to look at this product when they pull the data. So I can go in the lower, uh, left corner settings and apply there. So I will see that product. Uh, okay. And we have product images on the left. Uh, this is something that, uh, don't worry, let's publish it and see it on the front end. I don't know why, but uh, maybe it's the conflict between the team and Elementor, uh, but it doesn't display the thumbnail images. But let's publish at a condition. So I want to display uh, this for all of the template. I have another one already set up. Let me just change that. Okay, templates. And let me quickly disable that one. Okay. Display conditions, I will just turn that off. Okay, great, now we can continue. Okay, save and close. And let's duplicate this and see. Yeah, here we go. So this is our new page and all the thumbnails are displaying correctly. So the one thing that uh, we can do now is let's say for example, that we want to add an and notification of sorts. So we can use uh, Elementor and let's say just add uh, a heading here and say that we offer free worldwide shipping. So we don't need to be reliant on, on some other uh, third party plugin to, to add a simple notification. So I will change this to be a paragraph and we will do some customization. So I want to 
keep this uh, accent color, this green, uh, for, for things that are actionable, that uh, user knows are clickable and that will that are interactive. So I would use a, a shade of black for this, for the entire section. So let's say uh, we can use this one. And for, so for us to have contrast, we'll color this text. Okay, free world, worldwide shipping. And we can increase the, the font size, let's say 18 and have it uppercase. Great, and we can give it a little bit more space on top and bottom, Maybe not 10, but five, great. And when we look at it on the, on the front end, uh, it will be from edge to edge. So we have a, a, our a notification that uh, is on top and that it's important for the user to, to, to see it and further um, improve that this is the right choice for him. Uh, now we can see that this content is really too close to, to, to uh, the section above. So we can add some padding to the section. And let's say, let's add three M's on top and five on the bottom. Okay, that's much better. And the, the one thing that, that when it comes to e-commerce products is what other people think of, of that product. So I want to include uh, a sec a element that will showcase this. So I want to add like those review stars and uh, give it text, see, see the reviews and for it to scroll down to the section that will have, that will, uh, have all the reviews. So uh, reviews, there you go, stars. And we can choose from Font Awesome or Unicode. I prefer this one. And, and th that's great. We can choose how many stars. Five is five is okay. And I want to add the, the text. So let's use the heading widget, but I will change it to paragraph. And let's say C reviews. But I want for uh, I want to have it uh, side by side. The one thing that I could do is use the inner section that will give me the option to include two columns. But a better way for for optimization purposes is uh, let's say to use CSS, but with within Elementor is to use positioning with and to do inline auto, and we can do the same for this one positioning in line auto. In this way, uh, the we can place them side by side. We will just give it the second one a little bit margin, let's say 20. Uh, great, and we can have a little bit padding at the top. Have everything nice. Uh, and afterwards, we can link that to anchor link reviews and we will add that section uh, later. Uh, the price at this moment is very, very small, so we can bump that up, 2.5 rems, and even 2.3 should be nice. Uh, this is interesting for the, for the short description itself that you see here. Uh, you don't have to, to write a novel here and explain everything there is to know about this product, but list three to five key things that a customer needs to know at, at bat. So this is something that is that I pulled from the, the original website and that, that is most important. By the way, the original website is very, very nice and ha has a great landing page for the product so you can go and check it out. Uh, this is a little bit too closed, so I will give the product a little bit space for the price. Okay, and this works fine. The one thing that uh, I would like, love to mention is that I've added some of the, the custom fields to, to, to the product. You can use additional plugins like uh, ACF or, or which one do you prefer? Jet and Coco Blocks has its own solution for those, but within the WordPress itself, you have the option to display and to add custom fields, you just need to enable it here from screen options. 
uh, and then you can see it uh, here. So I've added a bunch of custom fields uh, with simple data like case material, case thickness, case width, what type of glass it is, and so forth. So we will be using this type of custom fields throughout. And one thing that uh, that people who buy watches are mostly concerned is uh, how, how big is the, the watch. And there are some standard sizes and I want to pull that uh, data in right now. So uh, let's add another heading. We change it to here. And one of the key features of the Elementor Pro version is that dynamic text. So we can use the dynamic tag to pull data from the product itself. And we have here post custom field. And then we have custom key. And we when we go to the product, we can scroll down and I want to have this like case with, so how big is the watch itself? So when I enter it here, it will pull that data in and we will have like 42 millimeters. And we can further style it Let's say we, uh, because it's a watch and it's round, we can use that for, for the graphic itself and maybe add like two pixel border and we can do more fun stuff with that. So we can use padding and add, let's say 15, give it 15 all around and let's say positioning in line auto. Okay, and then we will play around with it and decrease this one. Okay, we're looking for, we have it like a, like a circle, but let's say and change it a little bit here. Okay, this is not an exact science, so we'll, ah, here we go. Let's say this is a, a, a circle. We can go to inspect element and see exactly uh, the, the height and the width. Let me just let it be 16. And let's play around a little bit more. Here we go. So we have uh, that custom field data in uh, displayed here and it symbolizes that it's the, the, the case size. So we can add one more thing to accompany that. So let's add one more heading. And we will say that it's a paragraph and see size chart. So this is very common and very handy thing to have uh, when we have these type of products that are so, uh, it's this type of products when you don't have it in in hand when you not uh, when in when you don't have an opportunity to to go to the shop and to see it on your wrist it's up to us to de to deliver uh, the most amount of uh, information for the consumer so it can uh, make a purchasing decision so this side chart is one of them so i will place it side by side but again using position in line in uh, inline auto and with padding we will position so it will be in the center like this and we will add you can add margin or or padding which one ever you prefer and I would like to link this uh, to to a pop-up image uh, so again we can use dynamic tags and we can search here for lightbox. And when we go here uh, to this wrench icon, we can choose a video or image. I want an image and I will pull the one that I already have in my library. This one is it. Okay, let's update and let's see what we have so far. Okay. When I click side chart, I have a, a, a beautiful light box that displays all the, the, the important informations about uh, the, the sizes, the strap, the case thickness, and so forth. Uh, if you want to go uh, a, a step further, 
you can use the, the pop-up builder itself and to have a, a more complex uh, display here, but I went with the simple image. Uh, here, the short description is too close, so we will add more margin to the top. Okay, and uh, when we take a look at it now, we already have like one, two, three, four new pieces of information in about the same space we had uh, before. So we have more info, same space. Okay, so uh, the next thing that uh, we want to uh, communicate is that we are trustworthy and that uh, the product uh, can be easily bought using their, their preferred method of payment. So I want to add below the, the add to cart uh, button, I want to add like PayPal, Stripe, Apple Pay, or whichever payment gateway we offer. So uh, you can use it as a one image. I just wanted to showcase it with, uh, let's say, SVG icons. So I will use an icon. And let's go with PayPal. Use that. And we can change the color, let's say, light green. Great, and we can use the size. Let's go with 36 for now. And same as before, uh, I want to place them side by side. So I will go advanced, positioning inline auto. And right away, I will give it a margin on the right. Let's say 10 pixels, not 100 or 15. And I will use the right click. Elementor has a great uh, right click uh, set of options. So we can go duplicate and it's a real time saver. So I will just go and replace the icon with Stripe. And I will continue on for other ones. So we can go, uh, for example, Apple Pay. can add a MasterCard. Of course, there's an option here to upload your own SVGs if you want to have a different style of, of icon that will go more with your brand. And this Visa. Okay, uh, so this is a really simple way to, to, to showcase uh, how easy it is uh, uh, for a person to buy uh, given all the different options that, that we offer. So when, when a consumer comes to our page, they have a, set, a certain set of belief, beliefs or misconceptions, and we want to break them down one, one by one with the given information. So we actually added even one more option, and it's still the, the, the same uh, room, the same space that we occupy. So that's that's pretty good. And we can go on uh, even further. And another pro tip is to use the, this navigator and to mark, to, to label your section. So this one is free shipping. This one is image, let's say plus add to cart. This will be much, much easier later on to, to recognize which is which, uh, because you will see we have a, a lot of info to, to, to add. Uh, then we will go and add one more section, two columns. Uh, and here now, this is all the basic information that a person needs. This, uh, this section that it's above the fold, this, this is the most important part of our page. Uh, but below, for the people who want to no more, uh, we can give more information. So uh, post content. This vision post content is actually, when we look at the product, this is the description itself. So we have the short description that's below the price and we have the description itself. So this will go here and let's say what it is. So let's add a heading and say, and say description. Uh, great, it's H2. Remember to only have one H1 tag for SEO purposes. Uh, great. 
uh, a little thing that we can add here is to 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 have a, a, a line like a separate like a divider and you can use the divider itself and say occupy 70 percent and it's really really nice the 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 thing another pro tip uh the thing that i stumbled upon recently uh, by accident uh when i did a one website is uh i saw an animation uh, for this line to be animated and you can use css to to have this animated but uh i my hobby is to uh to find ways how to use elementor options and widgets for the purpose they are not built for and this is one of them so we have a progress bar and you can use the progress bar so this is this is the most stupid thing you can do is for you to have i'm a 50 percent. i know 50 percent of photoshop or whatever that means there are places when you can use this progress bar your skills are not one of them so I will delete all the text, okay, and display percentage no, and let's say style height, let's say one, or you can go with two, and you can we can have it like seventy percent, and there you go. You have your line that it's animated. Let me just change the color. Okay, we have this one. And the background color could be white. Let's update it and see it on, on the front end. So when we scroll down, we have that divider with, with animation. So you can use it uh, if you want to add a little bit more movement to, to your page. Okay, and for this part, we want to add a video. Okay, and let's place it here. And we want it to be self-hosted. I'm just going to grab the, the link itself from the one that I previously built. So, I pulled the, the, the video straight out of their website, but you can use a uh, video that you shared on your website, or you can use the, the, the video from YouTube, Vimeo, or whichever one you like. So uh, it's important to click this external URL. And uh, for, for depending on, on your, the way your store is set up, maybe you have one product that displays your multiple products uh, or, or you have a different video for each of those uh, products that you have. Uh, if you have one that it's universal, you can use a link here. But if it needs to be dynamic, you can add it as a, a custom field and place it uh, like that. So you will add the, the video uh, URL in, in the product page itself. But uh, to save time, I, I will do it this way. And one thing that uh, we want to add as well is style. And this video is in the ratio one by one. Uh, great. And if you like, uh, I prefer to have it uh, vertically aligned to, to the middle. So uh, a little bit like this. And to rename our section, description and video. Let's say description, we will know what's all. And this is a, a good way to add additional information with text and video because, uh, let's be honest, people who buy uh, watches in this price range and up, they, they like every detail, they want to see every angle. So uh, give all the multimedia that, that you can give it with every variation of, of color and this is one of the things that i want to mention that it's not technical uh, but we have a lot of product images based on uh, attributes that they select but make sure that you include uh, let's say lifestyle photos so not just 
typical on white background, but including how it looks with, with some outfit, how it looks in the real world, how does it look on my hand? So people can really envision it and imagine them uh, themselves using it. And also depending on your industry, uh, some people uh, want to know what the packaging is, but for real watch enthusiasts, they want to see the, the, the back of it and maybe uh, it will give them more insight. So uh, what the water resistance is or uh, this type of, there are a few type of movements. This is Japanese uh, movement. Uh, this, the, it has a sapphire crystal for, for the glass and, and stuff like that. Uh, people can uh, use the information or just to see how it looks. So make sure to include product images, lifestyle, and some additional photos that might be useful. Okay, and this is uh, this is the part when we can really the people buy, particularly the people buy this watch because of its story. It's not uh, a, a bunch of glass, metal, and mechanisms you know uh, they buy it because it's Scandinavian because they have a a, a good story behind it they are they are eco-friendly and and stuff like that so this is uh, opportunity to to tell your story okay going further on uh, we can go a little bit more technical and give some more explanations some more specifications so we will add a new section and this is the part let's say we have we want to have three sections we have want to have specifications uh frequently asked questions and we want to have a set of instructions so let's use tabs so our page doesn't go on and on uh, in the height so tabs and let's give it a padding top and bottom great and uh let's use the vertical one great and we will have, like we said, specifications, FAQs, and instructions. Great. And this is the, the, the three main things that, that we want to have. Uh, OK, and Elementor with this the widget gives us uh, uh, what you see is what you get editor. So the, the one that you are most familiar with. And we can add uh, text here. Of course, we can pull the dynamic data, but uh, there is no way to add. We can't add some com more complex layout or, or to use other widgets. Uh, perhaps I want to use uh, another widgets, another widget from the list to place it in here. Uh, th that's not something that it's offer uh, of the bat, but uh, there is a way to go around. And this is what I wanted to, to, to show you. Uh, we can use Elementor's uh, templates and go to save templates and we can create a section. So let's add new. It will be a section and this will be specification. It'll product. That's great. Template. And here we want to showcase all of those things that uh, we have in the, the custom fields. Okay. We want to make our own. Ignore the, 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 the title. Uh, we only want to see what's here. So uh, this is another thing that I want to show you is there are a lot of, there are, I think, uh, 92 elements, I think uh, the free and the pro version. Uh, and there are a lot of them. And some of them are, let's say, feature specific for, for a certain need. So uh, this is a price list that it's meant for, let's say, restaurant menus that, that you have like a, uh, you have what the, the, the course or, uh, let's say pizza, then you have the ingredients and then you have the, the price. But we can use this in a different way for a different purpose. For our purpose is to display the, the specification itself. So the title will be case thickness. Okay, and we don't need the description and we want to pull the data dynamically. So 
let's use this and just change it. Base thickness. That should be it. Let me just check. Okay, let's do a few more and see later on. Uh, okay, let's use case width. Okay, and let's delete the links. And let's do one more, and then we'll check it out. Uh, so the title will be strap with ice. Okay, strap with. Okay, and let's delete the link. And let's just make sure uh, that we have uh, to pull our data from. Yeah, we don't have <laughs> post. Should be crowded. Let me just see. Okay. Let's see if it works when we place it. So basically, uh, we have a section that, that we made. Let me just remove the, the default padding that we have for the column. Okay, update. And when we exit, exit to dashboard and go to our save templates, search our, our product specification, we have this show code and we can use this show code to place it instead of this text. Let me just okay, update and let's see if we done everything correctly. So here we go. We got all the, the custom field data pulled dynamically from the product itself. So. Uh, we can go uh, and add, we have three more. So when we go here, let me just, okay, save templates, edit with Elementor. And for me, just let me check. So you don't, uh, sit there and just watch me enter it uh, one by one. I will just place the same one that, that I made uh, earlier on. It's uh, the same one. It's not this one. It's probably the first one. Yeah, so it's this one. So as you can see, it's just re repetition uh, going to all the custom fields, names and entering them there. So now when we look at our product page, we have all the specifications. So the point is, uh, is how do we combine one widget with another so you can use Elementor's templates and place them as short codes. Uh, the same thing can be done with the, the FAQ. FAQ is traditionally used as an accordion. So I will do it, I will create one so let's say it's section product FAQ. And we can go here and search for accordion. So we can add our question here, add our answer here. So uh, I've went forth and uh, pulled from their website a bunch of, uh, from their FAQ, they have a separate FAQ page. So I pulled some some of the, the questions and answers. So here it is the FAQ. I just wanted to speed this thing up so you don't watch me enter in uh, data that you know how it's done. So this is the question, this is the answer, as, as simple as that. So we can publish this. Okay, and we can exit to dashboard to grab the, the short code, save templates. So product FAQ, and we can place it in our single. So FAQs, 
Make sure to, to paste as plain text here, or just go to text and paste it like here, so you don't have some strange code. Update, let's see it on the front, not this one. It's this one. So FAQ, we have our accordion, and in this way, using the tabs, we can save a lot of scrolling space that for uh, maybe not all users need to see this, but for those who want it, they can easily find it. And uh, another thing that uh, could be potentially be interested, interesting for our users is to see some instructions. And I've, I found on their YouTube some video instructions and I went and uh, saw that they do have a playlist. So let me just grab it. Okay, product. This one, second, yeah, Team Builder. Okay, so we can, you can go on YouTube or, or this depends of if the client has that uh, type of content, but they do and it's uh, really, really good, good customer experience. So I'll just grab this URL and there's no need to create, you can, but for this purpose, you don't need to create a separate. Uh, so I will just delete this. Uh, WordPress has, you, you just paste the link from YouTube and it will embed, embed itself. Okay, we have it now and we have our specifications. So we have this, we have FAQs and we have instructions from, from YouTube. And this is a playlist that, that has four videos. Uh, let's just increase these uh, tab titles. So style, and let's go title. Let's increase it, maybe 21. 21 looks good. looks good. And that's great. So let's name our section. Let's call it specifications. Okay, and uh, we can go further on. and. Uh, this is the part where we can, I want to, to show you an interesting way that we can focus on to add call to action to really focus on what's important. So this is our product page. And the most important thing on this product page is uh, this add to cart button. So uh, because it's a long page, when you scroll and scroll, uh, and we will even add even more data uh, underneath. Uh, maybe I will come back to it later. I, I will see it. Where is the add to cart? I will do it later. And they never do. So we want to not impose, but to have it conveniently available. So the thing that I want to do, some teams uh, have this kind of option, but I wanted to showcase how you can make it for yourself. So so let's go. Be, uh, when we look at all of our content, we have this image and add to cart, and we have the description. Okay, and I want to add a section on top, on top of this. So this will be a section with two columns that will have a title. So what's the product name? And I will pull that post title. You can do it like this, or you can use the, uh, there's a product title itself. post title, uh, page title, or post title, it will do the, the, the same. We use the, the product type, title in the beginning. So it's the, the, the same data. Uh, we can use some smaller font, let's say H3. Great, and uh, we will use a button. Uh, let's find a button. Here it is. And I want to align it to the right. And it doesn't have to be uh, a green button. It can be a shade of black because we want to. We don't want it to be too distracting. So let's black, and let's say add to cart. Great. So we have the name itself and add to cart. But uh, the thing is that uh, I want to have it. So add to cart. I want it to be an anchor tag and I want it to scroll up 
to this section. So for this section, I will go to advanced CSS ID, add to cart. Great. And so, and that's it. Let's take a look. So, and see if, if it works. Uh, okay, so we have the title, add to cart. It's, it scrolls up. Okay, it works. The thing that the effect that we are going for is to have it this be sticky. So this section, advanced motion effects, sticky top. Update. So when the user goes past this above the fold section, uh, this uh, thing will stuck to the top. Let's add for the time being just a spacer. So we have something to scroll. Okay, let's say 200 viewport height and let's give it a color, a background color, white. Great, let's check it out now. So we can scroll, it's, it sticks to the top, it has the product name and has the add to cart. Great, let's just add a hover color, hover, background, we can do the primary. Great, and let's align it vertically to the middle. <laughs> okay, so this is all good. The thing that we want, it, it, it's a little bit strange to, to have it uh, li like this. So we want to hide it and only show it when, when we need it. Uh, so we can do it like this. Uh, we can say that this section will be have a minimal height of, let's say, 70. We'll, we'll go with 70. And then I will go to advanced and give a negative margin of 70. So it will be below the, the previous section. The only thing we need to do is to give it this section a color and it will be white. Okay. And let's see if we did our math correct. So the idea is that we, okay, we need to add it more. Let's see. Okay. Let's see where we went wrong. So section, advanced, okay, top. And let's go in further. Yeah, uh, let's go with 70 and let's not forget to have it Z index. So this will be like Z index 10 and this will have Z index 20. Z index determines what goes in front of what. And let's see it now. Yeah, so we don't see uh, the title and the add to cart, but when we scroll, it appears. So you can do this type of effect with some JavaScript and some CSS, but this is a, an easy way that you can control. So it, it, it appears like it appears because we are above the certain scroll level, but you know the truth. It's uh, hidden uh, here. So when you scroll, it scrolls to the top and we can go at, uh, at the cart and it leads us where we need to be. The one thing that we can add to, we don't, this, we don't want for this to be distracting, but I want to separate it a little bit better. So I will just go and I'll name this uh, cart. And for this section, I will go to the style, border, and I will add a hint of a drop shadow. So be very careful how you use drop shadow. It can go really bad, really, really fast. So I will drop the opacity to uh, 20%. And let's see it now. Uh, we would probably need to push it up a little bit more because of the shadow. Let's see it. So yeah, we need to push it a little bit more, but uh, now it's, it stands out a little bit better. Uh, let's push it up. 
it doesn't really matter that much, but just to be sure. Yeah, yeah I went too far. <laughs> uh, I can add, I can reduce that, or I can uh, add more padding here, whichever way you like. Yeah, you can do it like this. And this is how you can get that, that type of effect. Okay, uh, great, great. Okay, let's go for, um, we have a few more sections to go. I will uh, try to speed it up. Uh, so this section is very important and it has to do with uh, the reviews. We can do reviews like uh, tech, uh, text reviews, but if you, have the possibility to include images, and I mean real images, not the the the, the photo shoot professional photographer uh, type of images, but the people who took out their smartphone. And uh, I, I got these images uh, from from Instagram, so I went to their uh, I went to Instagram, and not their Instagram. I went and searched the hashtag for this watch, and I pulled the images from from there. Uh, so let's say we want to have uh, four columns. And uh, you can use, let's say we want to have an image. We want to have the text. And we want to have who is the person. So first name, last name. Let's say that this is the, the structure that we are going for. Uh, and these are three elements. If there's a way for you to find an element in Elementor that has these type of options, but it's one widget instead of three, please do it. It will save you a lot of uh, work on speed optimization. So uh, let's just say uh, we can do that with image box. So image box, and we can make it work. So the title, uh, it's actually an H3 tag, but I need it to be text. Luckily, I can change it to a paragraph and, and use that. So this could be, I, and I can replace it. So this could be a testimonial, and this could be like Milan Milis, Milic. Okay, I said that. And we can go to the image, and we can go and find, let's say, this one. And we can say that image size full with 100%. So and let's also content align it left. So this is the, the thing that I'm going for, but uh, let's make it the, the, the same. So basically, this uh, on the eye, this looks the same, but uh, this first option will produce a lot more code because for every element, that you add on a page, it had multiple containers, HTML, uh, and it will make your code bloated. So if you can replace three widgets with one, do it. Uh, so uh, this is the thing that, how I built the, this, uh, this testimonials. The thing that I did differently is I did one section because I wanted to add the title so people can know what it is. So let's say what our customers say. Something like this. And we can go further on with the, the theme that we had with the, the divider, the, the, the thin divider, let's say 300 pixels, something like this. It's two pixels and not to have again. Okay, and now uh, for it to be in the same section, we can use an intersection. Okay, this is a part where Navigator comes in handy. Okay, and I can just use this one and bring it over here. So I want to have the four, the four columns, four columns. Let me just duplicate it so you can see. And okay, for, for uh, this type, uh, the, the interesting thing is that we have a container that for Elementor, it's 
1140, so 1140 pixels, uh, the, the container. But we can break out of that container and let's see how it looks now. Yeah, the space. So we have it like this, but we can break out from this container uh, like this. So we, we, when we go to the section options, uh, content width, full width, and we have to also do it for this intersection. Let's update it and always check it out on, on the front end. So yeah, uh, this can be uh, done in, in this way. You can even add uh, one more column, but depending on your screen size, it, it, it can differ. So test it out in the laptop sizes and also on the on big screens. But I just wanted to showcase that you can break out uh, from that container. And to save time, I will just add the the this section that, that we had, it's uh, reviews, I believe. So yeah, what our customers say, I just did uh, the same thing, just replaced it with, uh, with the text. And I've added a button with the Trustpilot uh, logo. So button, it's an actual link that you can go and see all the reviews and they do really have great reviews. So don't trust us. Uh, this is a non-biased service that, that you can visit and really see that what people are uh, saying about our brand. Uh, so that further on uh, increases the trust people have in our brand when we openly say it like that. So use images that there are, let's say, candid photos uh, from the real people that are not perfect. Okay. Uh, and the one interesting thing that I've added also to this page is the the processing, the buying process it's not linear it's not uh, i saw an ad went and bought it maybe but for the most part it's not this is a topic that requires research so we there's a uh, step zero uh, and people now more than ever have every tool at their disposal to go and and learn more about the product than the people who work there uh, so uh, we assume that they will go on YouTube and, and look for other, so uh, uh, Nord Green Pioneer Watch Review. That's the first thing that I will go and watch. So I want to make it easier and Elementor introduced uh, recently uh, an, an interesting uh, widget that it's video playlist. So we can use that and I went on YouTube and just entered a few interesting video clips that I found that are from people who are expert in watch collections and what they had to say about it. So uh, I just added uh, the same type of title. So let's go copy this one and use it, paste it over here and let's grab the divider itself. This paste, uh, copy paste really saves a lot of time. And let's place the video playlist on the bottom. Okay. And let's say here, expert reviews. So uh, we can use this widget. I will just, as before, import the one uh, that I prepared so you don't watch me copy and paste widgets. Uh, expert, here we go, expert reviews. So basically uh, this is it. So uh, we have uh, a list of interesting videos that uh, unbiased people talk about our, our, uh, our watches, particularly this watch. So th this could really save up time and uh, for people not to leave our website, everything you need information wise, you can find on our website to make your purchasing de decision, okay? We have some section that are not named. Uh, yeah, this is the one with the spacer. We don't need that one. All the others are fine. Okay. And last but not least, we want to add related products. And this is going to be really simple. Just drag and drop the, the widget itself. Give it a little bit of padding and we're good to go. 
let's say five yams. Okay, and let's see our page. Okay, we have all of our basic information with some pop-ups, uh, the price, payment options, additional information, specifications, reviews, a lot of reviews, the ability to, uh, and uh, the, the reason this button is not the, the same as this one when you actually choose the, so this is my accent color. And this is the one thing that I want you to do, the most important thing that I want you to do on this page. And not every button that I want to have is uh, with an accent color. So this is not something that it's massive. I want to, to, for you to see it, but it's not 100% that uh, I want you to focus on. Same as this one. So don't, don't make it, uh, don't make everything important. If everything is important, then nothing is important. Okay, and uh, this is the, the, all of the things that we have uh, section-wise. There is a few things that I want uh, to, to add even, to go even above and beyond. And uh, I want for, because this is not an easy decision to, to make, uh, we offer our, our clients ability to schedule a call with one of our experts. And this can be very, very, really, really powerful. So let's say we want to, go and add a button and say book a free consultation because if we can have uh, you on a call with one of our expert experts uh, consultiers or, or whatever uh, the chance of uh, our experts closing on you to buy a watch is really 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 high so this is really important for us. Uh, but uh, I want to, to, to have this uh, button fixed. So the thing that I want to do is firstly, remove default uh, padding that we have on the column. Uh, then to have this button position, absolute. Okay, and I want it to be right and bottom. And let's just see how it looks on the front end. Where is our button? Okay. Uh, that's good. Let me just see if for our section to be full width. And I want this button to stick to the bottom. So we want to go to motion effects, sticky bottom. Okay, let's see it now. Here we go. So when we scroll, we see it here on the bottom. So if you want, you can, and we can even go and make a font a little bit smaller. So style, uh, let's change it to 16 is enough. Great. And what happens when we click on this button? Uh, free consultation, we are missing. We can add a call. But consultation is okay. So uh, we have uh, a great pop-up builder that, that we can use for this. So uh, book, a, book a call. Okay, create template. Okay, and here we want to create a, a simple form that people can book. And we want to tell them what's it about. So book a free consultation call. And okay, we can have the heading even a little bit smaller. Let's say about this, we can add more padding to give it more room to breathe all the way around. Okay, and we can add, uh, we can change it up, this form a little bit. So this could take 50% email as well. And we can add 
some uh, specific uh, things to this uh, form. So, for example, we can give uh, people uh, opportunity, of course, to, to choose the date. Date, give it 50% as well. You can use the native HTML5 that will change based on device and also the time. Okay, I'm 50% as well and native HTML. Let's say like that, uh, place the message below. Okay, and we can add uh, an interesting option is to have it radio and uh, what works best for you? Let's let's call it that. And you can choose an option to be uh, text only. So it will be via email, audio only. Or do you want to have a video call? So this could be really interesting and we can use it as a list and place it here. So this could be uh, an interesting way to deliver an experience that it's best suited for, for your customers. So let's call it book a call. And also we can give it a little bit an explanation here. Uh, so what people can expect you can hear from one of our experts so let's just increase the font a little bit uh, so we can just publish there's no need to set up any kind of uh, conditions uh, we'll just save and close and when we go back let's refresh, refresh the page there are multiple ways how you can tie the pop-up to a uh found on wordpress and then go forward okay i will answer the question in the end uh great question uh so back to a button dynamic tags and we will find a pop-up uh let's see how we call this one general settings book a call okay and let's search book a call template and we can uh, go here to settings uh, and interest animation, fade in, exit animation, fade out, and let's have it 0 0.8. Save and close. And let's see what we did. So book a free consultation, and here is our nice pop-up. So yeah, basically, uh, this is it. So for the form, you can have it uh, action after submit. You can email it to multiple uh, email addresses or have it redirected to a thank you page so you can more conveniently track it with Facebook Pixel or whichever one you want. And you have multiple uh, different options here. So you, thank you for booking a call with us and where this page, uh, where the, this email is going to uh, be sent. So uh, this is a, a book. And the one more thing that I want to add with the pop-ups, uh, let's go here. Uh, so the in the marketing world, there is an upsell, cross-sell, and downsell. So upsell is when you use the product uh, that is curr currently being viewed and offering a product that it's more expensive. A cross-sell is uh, offering a complementary, uh, something that goes along with the initial product. And downsell is uh, we're losing the customer and we want to offer them, a, let's say, a discount or a cheaper product or, or some way to, to save that sale. Uh, so this is a little bit in, in that realm. So we want to create a pop-up and to offer a free, let's say, product free strap. So uh, we want to offer for the people that are going to leave our page, we want to and to offer a, a free free strap. And uh, let's go here and let's say add call to action. This is an interesting uh, widget. 
let's place it like this. We can increase the pop-up size itself to let's say 800. Let's start with this one and free strap. I will, I'm going to try and remember which, which one, but I think I'm going to have to pull it out. Uh, free strap, yeah. Uh, there is some text involved, so I'm going to uh, pull it here. Yeah, free strap with your watch, add to cart and use uh, a coupon code, uh, select your watch. So all I did is placed an image here, the, the title itself, free strap and text description. And uh, the interesting part here is the, the button itself. It says, select your watch. It doesn't have a page, a separate page to go. So for the link part, what I did is use again, the dynamic tag, let's do it again. So dynamic tags, and all I want to do is close the pop-up because we are on the same page as the product. So you can use action pop-up. And when you go to this wrench, you can uh, say action close pop-up. And uh, basically it will just close the, the, the pop-up. The interesting part here is that we want to have uh, a condition and we want to have it on uh, page exit intent. So when a person tries to exit the page, this bubble will appear and offer a, a free strap. Uh, okay, so we want to add condition, this condition on single uh, WooCommerce on, let's say, products. And we can specify which product, but for the time being, we want to have it on all product pages. So let's view our page. So we have the size chart. Okay, we have the size chart pop up. We can choose our product that jumps immediately to, to the specific image. We can zoom and view all the details. We have payment gateway options that are offered. Uh, we have, yeah, the thing about the video, uh, I like to add so the widget itself, uh, I like to add this poster image. So let's use this one. Okay, and we can even do an image overlay. So th this will help with the speed optimization. Okay, uh, yeah. If you want, you can enable Lightbox. It will, when you press play, it will display in a pop-up. But this way is just fine. So this would load much, much faster. Uh, okay, so that's, let me just see if I missed anything. Okay, back to our page. Okay, here we go. So we have our video, great specification, accordion FAQ, instructions with the video, what our customers say. If you want to see even more on Trustpilot to, yeah, this one also has, let me just see, lazy load option. Uh, that I want to mention. Uh, ah, here we go, lazy load. Speed, speed, speed. And when we go further on, we have the Pioneer watch at the cart that scrolls up. And in the bottom, we have book a free consultation that we can choose a date and time and send it. And also when we try to exit the page, we have this pop-up that we click and it closes. Okay, guys, I'm, I'm pushing the time limits. Uh, I think Maya doesn't, hasn't said anything yet, but I wanted to, to, to bring you as much value as I possibly can in, in, one, uh, in one talk. So uh, for the end, let's just uh, compare uh, the, this type of information that we deliver to our potential clients when you see it here and where we started with the default uh, options that are given to us here. So you can see the, the difference uh, in amount of information that we deliver to our customers uh, uh, for them to give more trust to us and eventually buy. So uh, yeah, uh, now I'm open for any type of questions. Um, I'm here for you guys. This was awesome to be mm -hmm. here. I think this was a very good business class at the same time mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, it's not, I don't think it's only enough to have the sense of design, but also some business strategy and user experience.
experience and expectations should be met, right? So first, yeah, the first of all, I want to thank you for giving us both the viewer, I mean, the user's experience and then mm -hmm. the experience. And that was really awesome. So before we move anywhere else and before everyone mm -hmm. leaves, I want to answer the question of Pavle, if possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Pavle is asking whether there is a plugin for images which adds automatic ALT text custom made or can be found on WordPress. What do you use for this? Yeah, I use the, the format media titles, it's called. And the, the important thing is for you to name the, the file of the image itself. So use keywords there. I use uh, low case, uh, so all small letters, I replace the space with a dash and use the keywords. So uh, the basically what it does, WordPress, what it does is to use the file name to add it to the title. And this plugin uses the title to add it to the alt text. But you, there are even more options there that you can tweak. Uh, so yes. so yeah, it, it's a lazy way to, to, to have all the uh, alt text, but you have to name your images and uh, this is something that you should do either way. I just pasted it from the yeah yeah from the WordPress.org repository. The link there just to have it there. So uh, I think this was a great actually a showcase how to think mm -hmm. when you think about designing in Elementor. I think everyone enjoyed. But I uh, gracias. Thank you. Pa. So, but I think that before, actually, let's just wait for a couple of more questions. Let's see if people have something else to, to add to your story, because I think this was, this was wonderful. I mean, I was having expectations, but this in-depth <laughs> analysis, statistics and everything, that was really awesome. Yeah. I'm really, really glad that, that, that you liked it. Uh, I didn't focus so much heavily on the design itself. I kept it clean, but some things are, need to be, let's say, respected with the, the spacing and the, the hierarchy and the contrast. Those are some, let's say, rules, guidelines that uh, must be uh, applied, but for the most part, the, the, the information to be delivered, uh, not to impose it, but to be conveniently available uh, when it's needed. And uh, the ability not to use 20 different plugins when we have the tools uh, available already. Yeah, and the only part that actually we could uh, continue with would be optimization for, for perhaps mobile and for... Yeah. Well, there's strings. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, uh, yeah, when, when I uh, did the preparations, I, for fun, I optimized it and didn't really took uh, much time. So it could be done really, really uh, fast. Well, since I don't see any more questions, uh, I think that we should all say a great thank you for this uh, great talk that we had. Uh, yeah, thank you for your time and thank you, first of all, for inviting me and thanks everybody that attended. I hope it was helpful. Uh, if you need anything, uh, Milan at level up AP, uh, dot rs. Uh, you can find me also on, on YouTube. Uh, thank you, Igor, for uh, pasting the link uh, if you have some questions later on. And perhaps maybe uh, before we split, I also mm -hmm. uh, in your um, autobiography online, mm -hmm you are actually preparing and that you have prepared some of the trainings already. Is there mm -hmm. any link that perhaps you could uh, point us to? So mm -hmm. if we were to yeah, say. definitely. I have a, a, a WordPress course that I talk a lot of, of uh, let's say I, I've developed a process. I've shared with you a link. It's in Serbian, uh, but uh, I go more in depth in a process that works for me and this talk could be a, a sample of, of that way of thinking. So if you want to learn more, it's levelup.rs slash WordPress course, uh, where you can find more info. That's great. And this is where they can find you, right? And if yeah. you can find Milan for some reason, then just uh, get back to me and I'm sure I'll be able to hunt him down. Thank you very much. I wasn't able to introduce uh, the beginning of this meetup because my internet provider just uh, stood up. No worries, we managed. But he's back, but he's back, so that's great. So at least I can say a very good night to everyone and I wish to see you next time. See you next Monday. Bye. Bye, bye.